Hello, I'm Jay Bowman, and I'm excited to share with you some insights from our latest construction spending forecast for the second quarter of 2024. So let's just jump right into the heart of the forecast. For 2024, we're forecasting total engineering and construction spending to increase by 5%. Now, this is a slight slowdown from the 7% that we experienced in 2023, but it still represents sort of solid growth overall. And even when you start to look a little deeper into some of the segments, there's a couple of standouts, primarily in the manufacturing, lodging, transportation, highway and street, and sewage and waste disposal. All of these segments are growing at 10% or more over where they were in 2023, which suggests strong investment continuing in these areas. And even some of the other segments, you know, whether it's education, healthcare, even areas like religious, we're seeing growth in those areas of about five to 10%. So again, sort of strong growth overall across many sectors. One of the other things that I'm excited about the Q2 forecast is that we add 2028 to the mix. And we look out over the next five years, there's really three themes that emerge that I would bring your attention to. The first one is sort of the rebalancing of the residential market. The second one is more of a question of how do you manufacture growth in a flat market? And then the third one is really around does growth really become determined by geography? So what do we mean by a rebalance in the residential sector? Well, first of all, single family home construction looks to recapture some of the losses in 2023 and what we may see in 2024 over the next five years. On the other hand, you look at multifamily and we see a continued sort of decline or drawback over the next five years. But all in all, you're looking at about a 5% compound annual growth rate in residential construction between now and 2028. The second theme is really more of a question, which is how do you manufacture growth in a flat market? Because if we look at total construction spending between now and 2028, there's not a whole lot of growth. It's more along the lines of the rate of inflation. And about two thirds, in fact, a little more than two thirds of the 19 construction segments that we track look to have a compound annual growth rate of between zero and 5% between now and 2028. Now, obviously it's in the right direction, but it's not necessarily the strong growth that we've been accustomed to over the last couple of years. One thing though to keep in mind, I've said this before, is that even with that flat growth, even when you adjust for inflation, these are five of the highest construction spending years in the U.S. since 1965. And that last theme, which is, does growth really become determined by geography? Now, I've shared before that bull markets and bear markets coexist at all times. And so if we are looking for growth, if it may not be at the segment level, let's say on a national basis, we may be able to find them at a geographic or a local basis. In fact, when you look at construction spending overall, roughly $2 trillion or so, about a third of that, 35%, occurs in just 12 metropolitan markets, and 22 represent 50% of all construction spending. The consequence of this is that you're likely to see more movement of competitors and stakeholders across geographies as they search for growth in a relatively flat market nationally. Well, let me conclude with the latest from our non-residential construction index. For the first time in two years, the NRCI has exceeded the 50 neutral line, coming in at 51.9 for the second quarter of 2024. Now this compares to 46 the prior quarter. So I think this shows this growing optimism, maybe cautious or conservative optimism in the market going forward. However, respondents still point to labor costs and material costs and challenges in the office segment as sort of continued concerns going forward. Again, I want to thank you for your interest in our second quarter forecast for 2024. I encourage you to download the full report at fmicorp.com. And knowing that this time of year typically represents the beginning of strategic planning and business planning for your organizations, and considering some of the changes that we're likely to see over the next five years, I encourage you to contact one of our consultants or one of our bankers to help you figure out how best to navigate some of the challenges we're likely to see over the next five years. Thank you very much.